Hey everybody, how's it going? It's a Daily Shooter, and I can't think of another rifle in my inventory that gets more questions at the range than the Tavor X95. It doesn't matter if I'm just talking about it in conversation or I have it out and I'm actually using it. People want to know, what do you think about it? Well, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about what I think about the Tavor X95. This channel is proud to be supported by the USCCA. The U.S. Concealed Carry Association helps responsible Americans like you prepare for what happens before, during, and after an act of lawful self-defense. USCCA members get life-saving education, expert training, plus defense liability insurance. These benefits provide more than 500,000 USCCA members with the peace of mind that they deserve. Plus, a USCCA membership is always risk-free with their 100% money-back bulletproof guarantee. Membership is truly an investment worth exploring. Click the most important link you might click ever down below and activate your U.S. Concealed Carry Association membership now. Okay, so I'm gonna try and keep this as short and simple as possible. IWI did not send this to me uh, to test out and review. I bought this about six or seven months ago from Spartan Arms here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I've put nearly a thousand rounds to it, not a whole bunch, not a ton. It's been used for optics reviews and different testing. You guys have seen it on the channel here now for a while, but I uh, never gave it a full review, but I at least have enough ammo through it where I feel like I've built up enough of an opinion where I can say whether I like it or not and also compare it with other bullpups that I've used in the past so that I have a comparison between other bullpups that are also on the market. Now for me, I feel like more of a comparison or a better comparison would be to an AR pistol versus a Tavor because I figure that a lot of people out there probably have AR pistols but not too many people out there have Tavors and if you're looking at a nice short compact package but you don't want to go the SBR route, chances are this is the direction you're going to be looking at, a bullpup, right? And the X95 is definitely a very popular one, so this might be the direction that you're going in. So for me, the comparisons that I'll make are going to be between AR pistols or SBRs versus the Tavor X95 right here. So if I was just to put it in a nutshell, just wrap everything up in a nice clean package, I love the Tavor X95. I think it is absolutely phenomenal. It is, it's accurate. It's about a minute and a half is, you know, the the, I would say average best that you're gonna have. I would say if it was just, you know, total average is gonna be about two MOA, but with good ammo, and if you're a good shooter, I think you can get in that 1.5 MOA range. So it's, it's definitely within specs for what you would use for battle. It's got a 16 inch barrel, but the nice thing about it being in a bullpup is with that 16 inch barrel, you're still getting a really short package, and that's one of the things I really like about it as well. So I have a 10 and a half inch AR pistol. This thing right here is about an inch and a half shorter than that when my AR pistol is completely collapsed. So if I collapse the buttstock on it and I put them side by side, we're looking at about an inch and a half difference between the two. So right already off the bat, you're looking at a shorter package, but you're not neutering the cartridge by knocking six inches off of the barrel. You still get that full 16 inch velocity that you would expect um, out of a full size AR-15. Now with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about what I think is probably most people's biggest concern when they're looking at an X95. They're, they're thinking about the controls because the controls with this being a bullpup and having your action in the back here, they're a little bit bass backwards, but not completely and not as bad as you might think because with the X95, they made things a little bit more, I guess you could say, uh, AR-15 like. So very, very AR-15 ish. So the first thing I want to point out is that we have a typical standard magazine release that's located uh, on the front in front of the trigger right here where you can lift up your finger and it's ambidextrous on both sides. So righty or lefty, just simply lift up your trigger finger, depress that, magazine's gonna fall out the back and that feels very normal. The safety is also very normal. It's in a very normal location. So, you know, if you have your hand on this thing and your thumb comes up, it's very easy to simply, you know, activate that safety with your thumb and it's a, in a very recognizable, familiar location. So the two things that I think are gonna get used the most, which is gonna be the mag release and the safety, are very familiar and very easy to use. The one thing that's gonna take a little bit of time to learn is gonna be the bolt catch bolt release. So typically you'd find it on the left side, right? There it says that little ping pong paddle that you would simply press and that'll drop the bolt or you can push it down and it'll lock the bolt back. But uh, that's not there anymore. So what we have for a bolt catch bolt release is actually gonna be located under here. So underneath the, the rear of the stock or underneath the action. So if you want to, there's two different ways you can do it. Obviously you can bring the charging handle all the way back and just let it fly home. Or you can simply press on this button 
and that is going to bring our bolt forward. But you have to remember that that's not there. If you are somebody who shoots a lot and you're used to that, you know, AR-15 little paddle right there, there's, trust me, there's going to be times where you bring your hand up in order to drop the bolt and then you have to remind yourself that, oh yeah, the bolt catch bolt release is back here. It doesn't take a ton of time to learn, you know, it doesn't take a ton of time to get used to, but for me, I would say maybe 10 to 12 mags, uh, I would have at least, you know, one time where uh, I would forget that, oh yeah, I gotta go back here in order to do it. So there's a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to that, but for the most part, everything else is very easy to use and very familiar. Now we do have a different style charging handle than where you're gonna find on an AR as well. Uh, the charging handle, which right now at least is located on the left side, since I'm a righty, it's just easy for me to bring up my left hand and charge this thing. Uh, is swappable as well. So you can, it's totally ambidextrous. You can use this if you're a righty or a lefty. And it's a pretty good size charging handle too. It's pretty thick, it's, it's pretty beefy, but that's great because it has a swept forward angle to it and it's very easy to grab onto. So you just bring your hand up here, it's got that nice grip, that nice angle, you bring it back, you charge it, you let it fly home, and you're good to go. But the other nice thing about this charging handle is it is non-reciprocating. So I, I know that that was kind of a big deal when I did a review of the SCAR 16 and the SCAR 17. You know, one of the biggest things that people didn't like about that was the fact that it has a reciprocating charging handle. This is a non-reciprocating charging handle, so while you're firing, this thing stays perfectly still and perfectly in place, so you don't have to worry about where your hand position is or getting anything in the way of it, uh, the non-reciprocating charging handle on this is, is fantastic. Now, I almost forgot to mention the trigger on the X95. It is going to be a little bit different than your typical AR trigger. It's probably not going to feel as nice, and that's pretty much the same for just about any bullpup. Bullpup triggers do tend to be a little bit different just because of the way the mechanism works. However, there are upgrades for the X95 trigger if you want to, and if we were to compare the X95 trigger to other bullpups, I would say that the X95's trigger is better than other bullpups that I've tried, uh, you know, including Desert Tech and so forth. I think it's got a pretty decent trigger on it. So it is going to be different, and it might take a little bit of time to get used to it as well because it feels a little bit more spongy, but it's not a bad trigger at all. Now, one of the design elements that you have to pay attention to when it comes to pretty much any bullpup, including the Tavor X95, is that you're going to have very little rail space, as you can see here. So here we have my optic, uh, and then I have a magnifier behind that, as you can see, that's placed kind of far forward, and that is because with this short package, as you can see from the rail all the way back, and I'm placing my cheek right about here, <laughs> The amount of space that you have on the comb of this is, is very little. So you kind of have to push any type of magnified optic forward. If you have a non-magnified optic, you can scoot it back, giving you a little bit more rail space. But since I have this 3X magnifier that has eye relief, I had to have it set up where my cheek weld is perfect right where I want it. And I still have the right eye relief for the optic that's on there. So it's pushed a little bit far forward, not giving me all that much space up front. As you can see, I have a flashlight that's mounted all the way forward. Now we do have some rail space in the front here. Let me see if I can squeeze these and maybe just take one of them off here so I can show you. We do have a little bit more rail space available on the side. So if you wanted to kind of move things, you could move them to the side. And we have these removable rail covers that are in the front right there. Very easy to remove as you just saw. You just simply press on the button, kind of like a Serpa holster. And then the whole thing slides off and that reveals some Picatinny rail on the side that'll allow you to mount other things as well. And that's gonna be on both sides, but it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's probably about four inches worth of rail space that you're gonna get at the three, I believe it's three, six and nine o'clock position. I, for one, haven't had to put anything there. So these have pretty much stayed in place the entire time. Now, when it comes to takedown and maintenance, it's not that difficult. It's not as easy as an AR, but it's still not that difficult. You can maintain this with a, a very low skill level, just based off of the instructions that come in the manual. So that's not really that big of a deal. Otherwise, it feels really good. It's nice and ergonomic. It's definitely accurate enough to get the job done. Uh, you know, about one and a half MOA is what you're looking at with really good ammunition, standardized ammunition like uh, you know, XM193 or something like that, you're probably gonna be looking at two inches to three inches, but I would say anywhere from one and a half to two is what you can expect if you're shooting good and you're using the right ammunition. Uh, the other thing about this too is, if you don't like this big, you know, honking grip and grip uh, trigger guard right here, uh, from what I understand, and I haven't seen this myself, I'm gonna have to look it up and see if it's something that I can review later on, but I heard you can actually take this thing off and replace it with a more standardized grip with a standard trigger guard as well. So it gets rid of this big thing in the front right here and gives you just a regular, 
you know, what, what you'd be used to as a trigger guard and, and more of a standardized grip. So for me, I, I love it. It's a lot of fun to shoot. It, you know, you really have a good time with it. You kind of wonder, you know, what's the point of investing so much in, in an AR pistol if you can get an inch and a half shorter and still have a 16 inch barrel. That's kind of the way that I look at it. Uh, it's really well balanced in the fact that the weight is back here where it's going to be held on by your shoulder. So you don't have the same fatigue that you would get uh, in the front. It's not super front heavy at all. The weight's going to be on your shoulder. But that kind of brings me to one of the downsides of the X95. As you can see on the stock right here, the, the stock is very vertical, right? It's, it's very straight. It has a little bit of an angle to it, a little bit of a bulge to the top. But because the comb is in line with the pick rail, instead of, you know, like a typical AR where the comb is going to be uh, lower than the axis of the bore, the, the comb on this one's going to be pretty much in line with everything. And so since it's in line with everything, you have to bring this thing up higher on your shoulder. And so what happens is you're not using this whole top, I'd say, inch of butt pad. It's probably, unless you're set up a little bit different than I am, but with my neck height, uh, I'm sitting with only maybe the lower two thirds of the stock actually on my shoulder. And I thought there's gotta be a way to get better stability out of that. And so I got some parts from MSR Arms. Uh, they have parts for the Tavor X95 and pretty much everything else you'll be looking for as well. But uh, this is a new butt stock and it's an angled butt stock for the Tavor X95. And what this does is it has enough of an angle on it where instead of this whole top inch, inch and a half sitting on nothing, it angles it out so it actually sits on the top of your shoulder so that you're getting full contact from that, uh, from that butt pad, giving you a little bit more stability when you shoot. So got that from MSR Arms. And then another thing that I'm gonna change out is gonna be the safety. And this is just kind of one of those, you know, little small changes, you know, maybe aesthetics changes might be all that it is, but uh, it's a pretty nice looking safety and we're gonna throw that on there as well. So there's things that you can get, there's things that you can do. You can always change this thing up to make it work a little bit better for you, but it's really cool. I mean, the cool factor is 100%, uh, the, you know, if, if that's really what you're going for. But other than that, I mean, we know that it's tried and true. We know that it's tested. We know that it's being used by, you know, different militaries and law enforcement units around the world. So we have the fact that this has uh, definitely been a tested platform. It's very durable. It's nice. It's comfortable. It feels good in your hand. Uh, it shoots well. It does everything that you would want it to do, and it's 100% reliable. To this point, and then, like I said before, I don't have a ton through it, but to this point, I haven't had any problems with mine. The only thing that I would experience or I have experienced is going to be a little bit of learning time. Other than that, uh, I think it's pretty much good to go. So another thing that people say when they see this is, is it worth the money? And that's kind of a question that I don't really like. Is it worth the money? Because it depends on your finances if something's worth the money. If you're somebody with a ton of money, then just about everything's worth the money to give it a, a shot. It's not gonna affect you all that much. But if you're somebody who is low income or very low income and you have to save up your money to get something, you know, save up for quite a while to buy something, well, that means something completely different. So I think is it worth the money really depends on where you're sitting financially. If you're somebody who had to save up for one of these, is it worth it? I would say yes, if, if it provides something that you're looking for. I and mean, if you're looking for a 16 inch barrel, you don't want to have to go through the NFA. You don't want to have to go and pay a $200 tax stamp and you don't want to have to go through a waiting period. And you know, you don't want to have to register it with the government, but you still want something that's short then yeah, 100% it's worth the money because you're getting something here that's still considered a full length rifle, but you're getting it in that SBR type package. So for, for that fact, yes, I would say that it's 100% worth the money. Uh, if it's something that uh, maybe you don't really need because you know you have a bunch of stuff and and maybe you've already SBR'd some lowers and you could switch stuff out to make it however you want. Is it worth the money? In that case, I would say I don't know. Uh, it's up to you how much you like it. You know the cool factor definitely has to be there. And uh, you know it's again I think it it depends on what you're looking for in your financial situation whether or not it's worth the money. To me, it was definitely worth worth the money. Um, I'm somebody who has a lot. I've got you know six safes worth of stuff. And even with six safes worth of stuff, if I want to go out and have a good time, there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to be grabbing this right here. So uh, I definitely think that it's worth the money. It is a very cool setup and it gets the job done. So the Tavor X95, what do I think about it? I, I love it. I absolutely love it. So I uh, hope you guys appreciated the video. I thank you all very much for watching. Trust me, I really, really do. I appreciate any thumbs ups and hitting that subscribe button. It means a lot. Thank you all again. Have a great day.